I've made a handful of YouTube videos already and I want to up my video quality and production now. But there's two problems that are stopping me right now. First problem is that I don't like spending money. Or I'm broke. Second problem is this doubles as my office and also our linen closet for our Airbnbs. So I am very tight on space and I want to maximize the amount of space I can and get the best production I can. In this video, I'm going to show you how to go from this to this in a super tight space with pretty much no budget. Not no budget, as in like you have a limited money, like no budget, like you broke. But we still got coffee, so at least we got that going for us, eh? First, you'll need to clear a wall or clear just enough room temporarily in order to put the backdrop or green screen in. Now you're gonna wanna grab a old bed sheet, preferably something blue or green if you're going for the green screen effect, uh, but really anything you want if you just wanna stick with a backdrop. I'm using some scrap wood I grabbed out of the garage to build a frame to spread the bed sheet on. That way I have storage behind it for the linen that I temporarily kicked out of here. Now, if you don't have that problem and you can just put it right on the wall, that's what I would have rather done. You can just take some thumbtacks. It'd be so much quicker. Uh, maybe reinforce some of the places with some tape like I did. Uh, if you do go for a green screen, from what I experienced with my backdrop, it being a darker blue, it doesn't really work that well. So I would go for something more vibrant. Now keep in mind, whatever color you end up grabbing for a bed sheet, you won't be able to use that color anywhere in your studio if you plan on using it as a green screen. Now do make sure that you get it wrinkle free. Wrinkles don't really look nice. I don't, I didn't have a steamer. I tried using an iron, but uh, I got mixed results with that. Now we're gonna build a soft box to soften light. I happen to have tissue paper left over from a gift I received. Uh, but if you don't, you can pick some up at the dollar store, uh, hopefully for a dollar, but dollar stores are more like $10 stores now. So um, also I grabbed a, gar a cardboard box, some aluminum foil and some tape. I then cut the two smaller tabs off the, what would be the bottom or back of the cardboard box. And I cut these in half so I'd have four of them. But the idea is I'm gonna use these to make the front of the box bigger by being able to fold those flaps out a bit and throw these in the corners. But to help them fit in the corners better, I need to cut little slits in the front that don't go all the way through, uh, allowing me to fold the cardboard to give it a better contact and more strength. In hindsight, I may have gone a bit overboard with the tape, but I really wanted to make sure it was sturdy. I decided to make a space double layer of tissue paper with a rough gap of about five inches, but you can always make it single layer if you like. Probably the biggest determining factor to this would be how strong your light bulbs are. I lined the inside of the cardboard box with aluminum foil to help maximize the amount of light it was kicking out the diffuser. When I was testing, this made an actual big difference. Next, find an old lamp, preferably one with two or more bulbs, and take the lampshade off and make sure it fits inside the box. You're gonna wanna grab white light if possible. In my case, I stole some out of my bathroom. And uh, also, do try to use LED bulbs because they don't get quite as hot as incandescent bulbs or fluorescent or halogen bulbs, and you're gonna be having it in an enclosed box, so there's gonna be a bit of fire risk there if it gets too hot. 
Finally, cover any windows with uh, bed sheets or cardboard or curtain, uh, just anything to prevent as much light from getting in from the outside as possible. That way you can have a clean slate in order to light your room with. The original light bulbs I grabbed from the bathroom were about 500 lumens each and so it wasn't enough light to really work well with the two tissue papers and the softbox. So I did go to the store and I did uh, splurge a bit. I got a pack of three 1500 lumen light bulbs uh, for I think it was like $12 Canadian. And so they do run a little hotter but they do produce a way more light. So now we have the backdrop done, we got a nice soft light. Let's move on to the table. Now, you don't have to have a table. I want a table because I like to build things, so this is somewhere I can actually build stuff and have a light shining on it. But the problem is I didn't have a table to use, and I also needed one that I could use while standing up. And so right now I'm standing on a high chair because uh, when I stand up, I'm a bit tall for the camera for these kind of shots, but when I'm recording building something, I'll be able to record it uh, because I don't get myself in that photo really. Now, I'm gonna show you a trick I used for this beautiful table. Yeah, so I just literally, I stacked on a little bit thicker piece of wood, uh, some of that sandpaper MDF board, and then I got a quarter inch piece of plywood that I went ahead and I did some linseed oil on the top of it. So that way it looked a bit more rich. For the studio itself, I personally like using this, just this dark blue as a background. Uh, when I'm building things, being able to have a consistent background color will be nice. I did want it to be able to double as a green screen though. The problem is that it's a Google Pixel 4 and it doesn't actually have like a pro mode on the camera. So it uses a lot of like computer, what's called something, computerization photography. And because of that, there's like, I can only adjust the lighting and it never gets the lighting right. So I always have to constantly adjust it, but there is no consistent number I can go to or anything like that. So I, it's always eyeballing it. Anyway, so if you want to use a green screen, by all means, go ahead. You can uh, take photos of whatever you want and put in the background, like feel like a studio, or you can go on the stock image sites like Pexels or Shutterstock, and you can go ahead and look for a background that you'd like that you think you can zoom in or zoom out and get quite to look like realistic. Or you can go with what most people do, which is just like a wood panel background or a brick background, something along that lines. There's a really good video in the description of this guy who using just an umbrella light um, and using a bit of a blurry background is able to get like a really nice green screen effect. So when it comes to your video and audio, I'm definitely not the guy to go to. But I will say, like from my past experience, I've been using a Samsung A8 that I picked up in Thailand. This thing's even smashed. And um, I haven't used an external mic, so I haven't been using this little lava lavalier. Lav, yeah, lav lavalier, lav, lava. Anyway, I haven't been using this. And I've just been using this with uh, no external mic and uh, Lightworks, the free version, which only lets you export in 720p. But now as of this video, I'm excited because I upgraded to Google Pixel 4 and I'm using an external mic that my brother bought um, as well as my camera setup is just a pillar and a camera stand with the camera on it. And for notes, I got my laptop right beside the table. Finally, if you're up to it, get yourself some props, maybe play around a bit, see if you can spice up the area. For me personally, I'm probably just gonna have a coffee cup and an empty table. Thanks so much for watching. One of my upcoming videos, I wanna turn this into an actual lift table. Uh, that way I can have a full standing or full sitting table, as well as my computer setup. I wanna get away from that white table and upgrade that as well. Moving forward, I plan on doing more of how-to videos as opposed to what I've been doing in the past, which is just showing what I've done as opposed to explaining anything. Uh, so if that's something you're interested, please like and subscribe.
Honey in my liquid.